Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leah D Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we're making an ultra glam seashell geode clock. And what I have here is I have a wood panel board. So it's a round wood canvas or a cradle board and I've poured resin on it and I've let that cure. So you can see here, it's kind of hollow in the back, but it works perfectly for a clock. And so I have poured resin on it and then I let that cure and now I'm ready to add my design. So I've kind of gone in with a washable marker and I've kind of laid out where, generally speaking, I want my sections to be for my geode. So I'm going to be adding a lot of glitter and there's going to be some areas where it's just going to be mica powder and things like that. So we're going to be using quite a bit of products today. So we are going to be using our DuraClear gloss varnish and I have some in a cup here and also I have a whole bunch I'm going to show you here a whole bunch of different products so I have glass glitters and regular glitter some iridescent glitter and also the seashells I'm going to be using and even more glitters <laughs> so lots of different types and also there's a couple others um, some fine glass glitter and also some little bits of uh, quartz stones so um, so what we're going to do first is, um, I don't know if you can actually see it on camera, but I've actually already started painting a line of gloss varnish along one of my marker lines here. And then I'm going to take these little, um, silver, they're like little glass glitter and it's like glitter, but it's kind of made of glass and I'm just going to pour them along the line that I've already painted. So I'm going to just try to be a little bit accurate here with that. And then once I've kind of got enough poured out, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to uh, fix it up. So I'm just going to clean it up here to go along the line as I want and shape it how I want. And again, the gloss varnish is going to work as a glue here for this glitter. And I love this glitter because it's very textured. So it, it is raised. It's not flat. It does have a, it's three dimensional. And again, it's, I believe it's glass pieces. So just be careful because they are a little bit sharp, but um, again, it just works perfectly for things like this, where we want a little bit of texture and dimension on our pieces. So really great for geodes. So I'm going to add a little bit more gloss varnish on top here, just to kind of make sure everything is going to stick properly. And I'll go ahead and do this with the rest of the line. There's going to be a time lapse we're going to go into here, and then we'll be back on the other side. Okay, so we're doing the same thing again where I'm putting down a little bit of gloss varnish and now I'm going to do the same thing but with our seashells. And this one here is called Opal Purple and it's from DB Resin Products. So um, yeah, I'm just going to lay them down and I don't really want to dump them just because I do want them to lay somewhat flat and it's a little bit you know finicky to go in and just kind of lay them down and then we'll just move them around with the paintbrush and just make sure they're set the way we want. This is a bit time consuming, so I will go into the time lapse and then we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we're going to continue the time lapse here, but I'm going to just voice over it just so that uh, we can keep things moving. So I did put down a little bit of the quartz along the top of this section here, and now I'm adding in some glitter from Paradise Glitter. And again, this is a really pretty one as well, where it's um, white, but it has really pretty iridescent kind of shine to it. 
And I'm also going to be putting down some uh, of this metallic glitter from uh, Advanced Metallics. So that's going to be going on here as well. Okay, so I'm ready to now add, fill in the rest of the clock and I'm going to be using mica powders again from DB Resin Products and I'm going to mix that with the DuraClear gloss varnish and just kind of make, you know, like a paint or a paste and just go in and fill in these areas. I will be adding in more detail as we go along as well, but just first want to get a base layer down. I also wanted to mention while I'm working on this that if you wanted to, the first, the first step before we started this here, you could just leave that to dry for about six to eight hours and then fill in these areas with resin. So if you wanted to actually do a resin pour and maybe do some ribbons or do some different, different types of textures, um, you could definitely do that here. So I just prefer to use the mica powder with the, uh, the gloss varnish because it gives me a bit more control. Okay, so I'm ready to add in some more detail. So I'm going to mix up a couple different um, sets of glitter, again from Paradise Glitter. This one's a purple that reflects blue, so it works really well for this color scheme that I'm working with. I just want to break up some of the whites that are happening here. So adding in a bit of like a tonal shading with the purple, just going to go into that. And I'll do the same thing in the white area as well, um, the larger white areas on the geo. We've left this to dry for about six to eight hours and now we're ready to add in some detailed lines. So I'm going to be using my Pebeo outliner in pearl white to add in details in the lavender area and then using the silver to add in details on the white area. So we'll go ahead and add those in and then we'll let that dry for a couple hours and then we'll be ready to start uh, top coating our piece. Before we start our top coat, I wanted to get a layer of this liquid latex along the bottom of the clock. And this is going to protect from drips because I am going to be pouring resin over the whole entire clock because as you can see, I did paint the sides with glitter as well and I want that sealed in. So we're going to paint this layer of latex around the edges and we need to wait for that to be perfectly clear, which takes about an hour or so. And then once that's clear, we're ready to pour. Okay, so we're going to be just putting on a thin coat of resin right now. This is the first of two top coats that we're going to be doing. And we just want to make sure that everything is sealed in. So I start with the sides first 
and I just want to make sure everything is covered along the sides and then I'm going to go in on each section and again just kind of drizzle the resin to make sure that it's getting uh, over everything. We don't want to dump it just because you may end up with pockets. We want to go in very carefully and make sure that we're covering all the sections and just make sure we're not missing anything. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and then uh, we'll use our heat torch uh, to make sure we get rid of any bubbles and then we'll let that cure overnight and then in the morning we'll be able to add our numbers in our second top coat. Alright, so to add in the numbers, the first thing I want to do is make this template. And so I just folded a piece of paper so that it would get used as a guide. But you can see as well, I needed to find the center. So I did find the center of my clock. I have a little mark there. And that's just by measuring uh, the height and width and then marking it. And then I use this to place over top. And now I can use my ruler to just follow the lines and make sure that all of my numbers and dots are actually where they need to be placed. And I've even gone in and I've kind of just marked where each one goes in case they get moved uh, in the process here. Now for the color that I'm using here for these numbers and dots, I actually spray painted just black pieces and uh, I use this duplicolor, uh, it's like a charcoal gray uh, color. So, so I, let, I spray painted those and let them dry. And now I'm just going to use my uh, glue gun to set them in place. So this way they won't move when I pour resin over them. We'll get that all sorted out. And then once we have these all set in place, um, I will be uh, mixing up another batch of resin and we will just be pouring that again over the whole entire piece. And once that's dry again overnight, we'll be ready to finish the assembly. Okay, so here's our clock and as you can see I've already gone in and I've drilled the hole um, with my drill. So, And now I just want to remove all these drips and the latex that's on the back. So I'm going to take my uh, utility knife here and I'm going to pick off these drips. Now I did leave this longer than I normally would. Like normally I uh, start taking these off at about you know 12 to 14 hours um, just because my resin normally cures within 10 but um, it's been over 24 hours so these are a little bit tougher you can warm up the uh, resin with a heat gun and that will help a little bit but i didn't really feel i needed it my utility knife was working just fine so i'm going to go ahead and finish this up and i'll be back once i'm done so we can continue with the next step Okay, it's all set. You can see how nice and clean that liquid latex left the back of the piece. And you can see I left a little mark here on the back and that is the top of the clock. So it lines up with the 12, just so that I have a guide when I need to put this mechanism in. So the last time I did this, I didn't know what this silver piece where it went, but now as you guys have let me know um, that uh, it does go over this, um, the center of the mechanism. So I'm gonna thread that through and try to line it up. Uh, we are going to tighten it and we can adjust it as we tighten, but just want to kind of get it in an approximate position here. And it does have a washer and then we do have a bolt. So we're going to go ahead and just use our hands to tighten that and then get that somewhat snug. And check the back and it's still moving quite a bit. So that wasn't great, but I'll go ahead again and try to line that up. And once again, we're going to go ahead and try to tighten that. And this time I'm going to use my little wrench, my little baby wrench here. And I'm just going to go in and tighten that. Not too tight. We don't want to damage our resin, but we do just want to make sure it's snug. So that, as you can see, it's not moving anymore too much. And one or two more little tightens and we're all set there. 
All right, so now that we have that, as you can see, it's nice and snug. If you need to adjust it, now's the time to do that. <laughs> and one little tiny tighten. All right, so, and now we have our hands that can go on and we're supposed to be lining these up to the 12 when we set them. So um, I don't believe, I don't know for sure if that is um, for the case for all of these mechanisms, but I know that some of the ones I buy, they do say that when you install them to have both of the hands pointing at the 12 and this little pin that keeps all of this in place. So we'll just put that in. And as you can see, it looks very cute. You can see if you just move them a little bit there just to show you guys the um, how the hands look. And there we go, it's so cute. And we're all done and check this out. I just love all the dimension and textures on this piece. And again, like I said, you guys could definitely use resin if you wanted to. I just felt more comfortable um, having the control of the gloss varnish. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a comment and like and subscribe and share. Um, it does help out a lot. Thanks guys, take care, bye.